Hi guys, welcome back to Rumorg TV. I am Rumorg Executive Editor Andrea Subasati, and we've been at it for a while now, and we'd like to hear from you. We'd like to hear how we're doing here at Rumorg TV, how you're finding our programming, what shows you're enjoying, what you'd like to see more of. So please take the time to comment below, let us know what you think, and you'll be entered to win a copy of Room Work 189. It's our special queer issue, July, August 2019. One of these has your name on it if you help us out. So comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Play Dead on Room Work TV. I'm Evan Miller, Room Work's games editor, and it's my privilege today to have with us Benjamin Rivers from Benjamin Rivers Incorporated. How are you doing, Ben? Good, man. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for coming. Uh, and he just released Worse Than Death, which is available on the App Store, on iOS devices, and will soon be ported to other devices. We'll, we'll talk about that that's, later on. That's right. So Ben, tell us about Worse Than Death. So Worse Than Death is an action adventure horror game set in a small town. Uh, it's about Holly, who's returning for her high school reunion, uh, carrying some secrets of her own and dreading this sort of terrible meetup that all high school reunions probably are. Uh, everything goes sideways real fast, and then, you know, blood's hitting the walls, and then she has to try to escape the town, find her best friend Flynn, and get out alive. I grew up in a couple small towns, but the place I consider my home is Barry's Bay, Ontario. Okay. Very small town, like 1,200 people. Uh, and I actually missed my high school reunion. Oh. So a lot of the, uh, the uh, elements I got put into this game were because, well, in an insane world, what would have happened if I had gone? Let's pretend it's just blood and gore and all this kind of weird stuff that goes on. My family will get mad uh, when I say this, but I don't miss living this <laughs> at all. I like left as soon as I could. Okay. I wanted to explore the larger world. But it's always been there with me. Like any sort of good horror story, there's always some, <laughs> some deep, unending terror that sort of drags you back to hell. What were sort of like your inspirations when working on Worse Than Death? A big inspiration was actually old horror comics, especially sort of DC comics stuff, uh, like uh, Tales from the Crypt, Vault of Horror. Uh, I grew up reading that stuff and I always loved it. And the thing you don't notice when a kid is how like hilariously melodramatic and extreme everything is, mm -hmm. as a kid it's just scary. Uh, but as an adult, I find you appreciate it a lot more because there's no subtlety in those comments at all. Something bad happens, something really bad happens, mm -hmm. and it happens in a full page sort of splash. There's a game out of Taiwan called Detention that mm -hmm. uh, came out a few years ago that's an absolutely brilliant horror game. Really a great use of 2D. Reinvigorated what I call the classic 2D horror um, genre. And with that, you're solving puzzles, you're, you're, you're navigating environment, everything is told through your actions. And seeing that again made me realize how much I love making those kinds of games. So you develop games with your wife. Um, how is that working relationship? It was the easiest way to visualize it. I'm like a tiny dog running around, <laughs> yapping at everything. And she's like a cat that sits on the couch and every now and then she just puts her palm and says, that's enough. <laughs> And that goes for the good ideas and the bad ideas. So I, I, I'm the creative director of the company and she's the producer. So everything has to go through her and she makes all final decisions. So when I get too close to an idea, she's the one who tells me whether it's actually going to you know, uh, work or not. I will get into the, all the dark, grisly horror stuff, but then she'll be the one who says, well, I don't know if another human being is going to appreciate this or be able to relate to it. Mm -hmm. And she helps keep the human element there. So all of the like really melodramatic scenes in the game, Anything that was like total Riverdale style, like dun 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 moment was always made to sing like that. Mm. Someone's gonna feel something right here uh, when that happens. And for me, I want everyone to feel something like right here when they freak out. So scaring players, I imagine is a difficult thing to do as a developer. How do you go about doing that? The one thing I've learned after so many years of making horror games is that people generally scare themselves more than any game. And our philosophy is that the player brings 50% of the experience with them, whether they are taking their own emotional baggage or their own fears. We give them enough rope to hang themselves with and then give them lots of opportunities to do that. And that's a landmark of good horror, I think, is 
kind of playing with what's in your head more than what's just on the screen. Right, yeah, everyone has their own sort of demons that they bring with them, and we could never conjure the scariest thing for you. We let you do that. Yes. How was it developing for the for the iPad? We actually designed all our games with touch in mm -hmm. mind from the beginning. And we're lucky because we use Game Maker Studio to make games, which lets us export to pretty much anything, console, PC, Mac, uh, and touch. When you play on touch, you essentially are just tapping the screen to move, double tapping on certain things to activate uh, objects, and it just it just works the way it would if you're using a controller or a keyboard mouse. Previously, when we worked on games, we used a lot of pixel art and a lot of like you know needle point pointing and clicking to get things done. Um, but we're mom and pop shop. We work in a studio together, and sometimes that means I should probably get out of the studio so Nancy doesn't get sick of me. And so I wanted to be able to make a game that wasn't just me sitting at a desk all the time because that gets pretty uh, pretty aggravating. So we realized that we could use an iPad Pro and Procreate, a, a professional drawing app, to actually just make the art without having to sit in Photoshop or a desk or whatnot. And that opened up a whole new world because suddenly I was able to do high-res art in a comic book style, which is what I'm used to working in, and just create things without having to worry about um, how long it was going to take, whether it was going to be to do, and the device that we had. And it made us, uh, let us make a game that was probably about three times larger than we thought we were going to be able to make in the same amount of time. As an artist, I love working on things that are familiar to me, and the art, other artists who work with them again um, also have their own techniques. And whatever lets both of us make cool stuff is, is amazing. Um, so I would rather make all my games using, like using a tablet and an iPad rather than having a separate computer. The puzzles in this game, I really enjoyed them. Do you have ideas for puzzles that? fit into the gameplay later on. It's really organic. Sometimes I have an idea for a puzzle. I think, oh, I'm so smart. I got this cool idea. You're going to rotate this thing and take this thing off, and it's going to be genius. And then I'll prototype it, and then Nancy will look at it and say, well, that's dumb. And then we just, <laughs> that's the end of that idea. Uh, the thing is, because we were doing all the high-res art in the game on iPad Pro, I was able to mock things up real fast, uh, that more so than I was able to do before. So we actually could test stuff in real time and just put in like a pencil sketch of a puzzle, try it out and see if it felt good or even made sense if you looked at it, and that made things a lot easier. Uh, one thing I noticed playing through the game on headphones on the iPad was the sound is really visceral. It's like another character almost. The game uh, Worse Than Death actually uses three positional audio, so we're just messing with you all throughout your Oh, games. I noticed. <laughs> and so there are things happening sort of all around your head as you as you play, and a lot of that is for gameplay so that you're tracking like monsters, you kind of know what's going on around you, but a lot of that is just to mess with you. So you might not know if certain sounds are coming in close or coming in far, and the whole point is that we just want you to like, once again scare yourself. All right, well, thank you so much for stopping by today and uh, talking to us about Worse Than Death. It was a pleasure to have you here, Ben. Thanks for having me. This place is amazing. Oh, thanks. Where can the people follow you and keep up with your work online? You can follow me on Twitter, at Benjamin Rivers. You can also check us out on the web at BenjaminRivers.com for all of our news. Well, that's going to do it for the first episode of Play Dead here on Rumor TV. What did you guys think? Are there any games you'd like us to feature in the future? Please comment and, uh, yeah. Start a discussion down in the comments below. Let me know what you think. 